What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey. I'm Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around at the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Powers 12 John's Lane. Stick around. All right, so we're doing an Irish today, and I almost never do Irish reviews on this channel, and it's nothing against Irish whiskey. It can be fantastic. It's just that my market where I live, which is Taiwan, is one of the cheapest scotch markets in the world. So comparatively, uh, for what you're getting, usually scotch is the more value-friendly option. Anyway, our bottle for today is the Powers 12 John's Lane, and this one was produced at the Middleton Distillery, which is very promising because Middleton is a fantastic distillery and they're actually responsible for some of Ireland's most iconic whiskey brands. Middleton makes the spot whiskies, people absolutely love those. They make the red breast whiskies, people love those. In fact, I'd say the Powers brand is probably one of their less celebrated brands. Uh, but that said, Powers 12 definitely does have its fans. This has been recommended by a lot of people. Because every time I review an Irish whiskey, I always ask for recommendations for other good Irish whiskies down below in the comments because I'm not in any way an expert on Irish whiskey and this one always pops up so I've always wanted to try it but unfortunately here in Taiwan this one is a little bit more expensive actually a good chunk more expensive than what it sells for in other markets. Fortunately for me I have been traveling recently and I have a friend who managed to snag a bottle of this stuff for a very fair price so Baloj thank you very much. Anyway uh, Powers 12 what do we know about this stuff? Well it's 12 years old Obviously, uh, it's been matured in bourbon and sherry cast, Oloroso sherry cast, so we have a very, very classic maturation there. And this one does pretty well among a lot of like reviewers and bloggers and vloggers, but not just reviewers, normal people too. We're not normal. As I said, this one's been recommended to me countless times down below in the comments, and I finally have my own bottle. I'm finally getting around to it. I'm excited for this one. Let's jump into our review. In the meantime, if you'll kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. Respects, this one comes in at 46%. It's non chill filtered, and I do believe that it's colored. So we got two out of three. Okay, so for presentation, I think this bottle looks fantastic. They did a redesign a while ago, and actually, the bottles that we have in Taiwan are still the older bottles. They're still the old design, looks like this. Uh, and if you look at the newer design, I think it's a vast improvement. I absolutely love the look of these bottles. I think it's very stylish, very unique. This says not chill filtered. It does not say natural color. It says triple distilled. We have a little marketing blurb on the back. Nothing too offensive. Five out of five for presentation. So I did add a small splash of water to this. On the nose, this is very nice. We get plenty of like fruits and spices from our sherry casks, plenty of vanilla from the bourbon casks. I'm getting stuff like butterscotch, brown sugar, caramel, dates, raisins, red apples, green apples, bit of leather, bit of chocolate, really nice nose. On the palate and finish, this gives us a beautiful arrival, very nice full mouth coating texture to this. I get plenty of creamy vanilla, loads of milk chocolate in this, and we get our classic sherry notes as well. So I'm getting stuff like dried red fruits, uh, jammy notes, sweet plums, cinnamon, dates, raisins. There's nutmeg, there's black pepper, there's leather, and there's a beautiful apricot note through this. Medium finish. Okay, so I think this is pretty good. Uh, I think it's a very pleasant surprise. This is one of those ones where it's unfortunate that it's more expensive in my market. If I could buy this for the same price that I snagged it for in Europe, I would buy it a lot more often. It's got some great flavors. It's got that sort of Middleton Irishy profile. Nice balance between the, the bourbon cast, the sherry cast, and the distillate. A lot of this works for me. As I said, casks are pretty good here, both the bourbon and the sherry. This one definitely does lean more into sherry, but it's not over the top, and it's not by any measure a sherry bomb, which is not the kind of whiskey I'm really enjoying these days. So for me, it's, it's right in that sweet spot. And what's interesting about this one is that I really can tie it into other, other Middleton products. And since Powers doesn't really do age statements outside of this 12 year old, we're inevitably going to have to compare this to stuff like Red Breast or the Spot Whiskies, which do have age statements. Now, I don't know too much about the Spot Whiskies, but I have tried a couple and they're really good. But I have had my fair share of Red Breasts before, so let's do kind of like a Powers versus Red Breast here. Uh, first of all, both brands have great names. It's all things that I like. Uh, red, the symbol of luck in Chinese culture. Breasts, yeah. 
but I also really like power. Now, granted, I don't have a lot of power yet, but I will someday. You'll see. You'll all see. So yeah, great names. Now, in terms of profile, both the Redbreast and the Middleton give us a very strong butterscotch note, which is something you'll find in a lot of Middleton products. Uh, interestingly enough, though, this is not something that I would compare to the 12-year-old Redbreast, which would be your first inclination. The standard Redbreast 12 has great flavors, but that one comes in at 40%. Uh, the other Redbreast 12 is Castren, so of course that's a different story. So I would compare this one to the 15, uh, both in terms of quality and in terms of presentation. Both come in at 46%. But beyond just the specs, the depth, the flavor, the complexity, I would say the 12 here is roughly on par with the Redbreast 15. The Redbreast 15, I would say, leans more heavily into those butterscotch flavors. Those butterscotch flavors are here in the powers, but I would say this one leans more into those Oloroso flavors, those jammy notes, those dried red fruits. So it's going to depend what you're looking for. In any case, if you've got a whiskey that's comparable in quality to a Redbreast, then you're in good company. And I guess in this case, you're literally from the same company, but still. Now I do realize I'm talking this whiskey up quite a lot and it's not a whiskey that's gonna change your life or anything, but it is a damn solid pour and it's the first powers I've ever tried. And despite this one being their only age stated release, it's now a brand that I want to explore more. Uh, they recently put out a cast strength expression and that's definitely one I'll be trying to find when I can find it. Anyway, yeah, I really like this one. This one is one of the most reachable bottles of whiskey I've had in a long time. I often find myself coming back to it. My friends all love it. This one's a crowd pleaser. For score, this one gets 86. And I actually wanted to go a little bit higher than that. I was thinking of landing on 87 for this one, but I do think that's a little bit too generous. The reason I wanted to do that, though, is just because viscerally, I just really, really like this whiskey. Again, incredibly reachable stuff. So I think if you're a fan of quality Irish whiskey, if you're a fan of the red breasts, if you're a fan of the spots and you've not tried this one yet, absolutely check it out. Highly recommended. Now let's talk value. So for value, this one is going to depend on your market. As I mentioned earlier, this is more expensive here, but my buddy picked this one up for, I think it was something like 45 euros maybe in that area. So just shy of 50 bucks, like 40 pounds for that price. I love it. Unfortunately for me, in my market, this sells for roughly 70 US, like 65, 70 in that area. And of course, at that price, it's much less sexy as a value proposition, although still not crazy. I don't know that I would never buy a bottle again at that price, but they would be far, far, far less frequent. So I hope you guys can find it for somewhere closer to $50. If you do, absolutely check it out. It's great whiskey. All right, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help out the channel, I've got the Patreon. Otherwise, like, comment, subscribe. Always appreciated. And of course, I've got the question for you guys. Have you tried our Powers 12 here? What were your thoughts? How would you compare it to the Redbreast line or the Spot line? Uh, any comments you've got, leave them down below. And finally, down below in the comments, you can also tell me what you want to see me review next. And I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.